My journey had taken me to Myanmar, a nation of 50 million people with over a millennium of Buddhist civilization. I was to begin my sightseeing in Yangon, one of the grandest old cities of the former British Empire. A vibrant capital of tree-lined streets where colonial and temple architecture form a unique cityscape. This is the Sule Pagoda, which is the geographical center of Yangon, and it rises 48 meters above the city, and it was used by the British to develop the grid street pattern for what was then known as Rangoon. Exploring the bustling streets of Yangon is like stepping back in time. A fascinating blend of people crowd the metropolis, Indian, Chinese and British descendants and the many faces of Myanmar's 135 different ethnic groups. This is a place that invites you to wander the streets on foot. I jostled my way past restaurants, tea houses, market stalls and a myriad of street vendors. Now I'm perched up high with views over the bustling city of Yangon, a city of four million people, the capital of the nation of Myanmar. Myanmar gained its independence from British colonial rule in 1948 and much of the city below bears the look and the architecture of that time. Yangon is one of the last of the modern capital cities of the world to have retained its colonial appearance and charm and the High Court building in behind me, which was built by the British in 1928, is still the main court for the Union of Myanmar. The bricks and mortar left behind by the British are some of the architectural gems of that era. Our walking tour took us along streets that were aligned to catch the Yangon River's cooling breeze, past impressive old landmarks and onwards to the Strand Hotel, built in 1901 by British entrepreneur John Darwood. I think Yangon's a fascinating city. It's uh, very underrated. It's the last Asian city that is still 100% Asian. It's beautiful. Uh, particularly downtown in this area, we have a, a wonderful array of colonial buildings. Uh, we actually sort of suggest that people get out and walk the streets, and we have a colonial uh, walking tour which takes in over two or three blocks some wonderful, wonderful, majestic grand colonial buildings. Yeah. But the Strand is a national landmark, uh, having been here for so long, and a lot of people just, just come to see the Strand. It's, uh, we're very lucky. <laughs> this boutique hotel with only 32 suites has retained its Victorian features. Marble inlaid floors, lacquered ceiling fans, and a towering atrium. Then it was time to make my way to the city's biggest markets. Now this is the Bojo Angsung Market in downtown Yangon, and it's formerly known as Scots Market. But after Myanmar gained its independence in 1948, it changed its name to the Bojo Angsung Market. And it's a lovely old colonial building, a big covered section that you can go in and explore for the handicrafts of Burma, the tapestries, the woodwork, the jewellery, the traditional clothing, and then once you've done that, you can come and explore the adjoining streets and continue your shopping adventure. The booths here overflow with souvenirs and handicrafts from throughout the country. Myanmar's famous gemstones, sapphires, rubies and jade. Oh, this is a lovely one. Oh, yeah. 
One piece of sandalwood all together. You can bargain for antique lacquerware, some of it more than a hundred years old. Now, is this, your, this is your lacquer shop, I assume. Yeah. 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 <laughs> There's lacquer stuff. So this one just opens. So There are narrow alleyways and raised walkways that are just as interesting as the main market section. You'll find a huge selection of old and new Burmese puppets and the dazzling colours of hand-woven silk, original watercolours and oil paintings. My next stop was the 500-room Traders Hotel in the heart of the commercial and historic districts. I was here for one of the city's major community events, the Traders Sunday Brunch, and executive chef Norbert was on hand to oversee his huge gastronomic team. Trader Sunday Brunch we're very famous for. It's the thing to do on a Sunday. Um, all the expats, the locals come here for, for an extensive buffet, which is very famous. And we only use the freshest produce, all imported from overseas. So where's all this lovely seafood come from? Um, I basically source the seafood from all over the world. It's all fresh and um, flown in. For instance, the oysters come from Australia, the lobster okay. from Thailand. Oh, I have some Thai lobster. Absolutely. And we have some um, New Zealand green mussels. Um, it's very exciting to, to source the product from all over the world and um, try to give the different varieties to the customer. It's a great brunch. Thank you very much. Thank you. From the executive lounge, I could see the road to Bago, my destination for tomorrow. <laughs> 